asking. Thank you everybody for joining us and you can take it away, Andy. Okay, so hi everybody and, and welcome uh, to the Michaels Community Classroom. I'm really uh, happy to be here tonight and we are going to be painting our uh, little painting of some evergreen trees. And I painted this on a four by six gallery rack canvas. So it's got the nice uh, chunky edge to it. Uh, if you don't have a gallery wrap canvas, that's perfectly fine. You can paint it on a canvas panel. And my first little tip that I want to share with you tonight is if you are painting on a canvas panel, go ahead and uh, attach it to a larger piece of cardboard. And I just used some loops of tape on the back. But this way you can paint right to the edge and still hold on to it and not get paint all over your hands. Um, I love to paint and I absolutely hate getting paint on my hands. So having your um, uh, canvas attached to a cardboard backing is a great way to uh, just help in handling your canvas. So as Kira mentioned, we will be using the new Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment paints. And these are, as she said, a new paint uh, to Michaels this year. They are a very heavy bodied acrylic paint. And by heavy bodied, I mean, these paints are super thick so when you put them out on your palette, they will retain their uh, shape. Uh, if you've got a little um, Hershey Kiss kind of uh, dab of paint on your palette, it's gonna stay in place and it's not going to slump, it's gonna hold its shape. So if you wanted to do uh, what's called impasto work, um, where you're painting um, really thick um, textures or you're using a palette knife to apply some heavy textures, this paint is going to uh, retain the shape of your texture. And that's an important thing because uh, if your paint is soft, you'll never have that ability to create the thick texture. We will be able to thin this down to a transparent uh, kind of watercolory look. And we've got a little uh, passage of our painting tonight that we'll be showing you how to do that. But it's, it's really, really great paint. It has an extended open time. So you will be able to paint with this paint longer than you would using the original formula of folk art paint or folk art multi-surface paint. So this paint stays wet longer. And that's really good um, if you want to blend and manipulate your paint. Um, if you want to dry your paint so that you can move on to another step, that's why I recommend having a heat gun rather than just a hair dryer. So that's my uh, personal preference. And I have a really big industrial strength uh, heat gun here. I, uh, during our quarantine, I overbought when I was on Amazon and because uh, I didn't need this super industrial size heat gun, but that's what I ordered. Um, I think you can get um, a crafty heat tool uh, at some retail stores. Um, you can also order them online and they're, they give off a lot more heat than a hair dryer but substantially less heat than my heat gun. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the colors that I've put out here on my palette to get started with. I am using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and this is Payne's gray, and I have pure orange. The uh, canvas is six by eight. And some people have asked about uh, what they can use in place of Viridian. And tonight you can use any really, really dark blue-green color that you have. It's gonna be perfectly fine. But I want to talk to you a little bit about Payne's Gray, which here on the palette, it just looks like black paint. But if you thin Payne's Gray down, um, you could see that it is a beautiful uh, blue-gray color. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to this so that you can kind of see that you get a beautiful uh, blue-gray color and it's not it's not like black. It has um, some life and some energy to it. So sometimes if you need a really dark color and you don't wanna use black, uh, you can always use Payne's Gray and that will give you a really beautiful um, uh, dark uh, toning color. All right, so we're gonna start on our canvas and I'm using a one inch flat brush and this has a uh, kind of, um, uh, a nice firm bristle to it. It's uh, more rigid than a soft tacklon brush. That's my preference for uh, painting on canvas. So what Andy, I'm gonna do is, yes. Somebody's Kira? asking if you can make a Payne's Gray. 
Like, would you recommend doing black, blue, and white? If they don't have it, what's an alternative for them? If, if you don't have Payne's gray, um, I would say that you could probably just use a little bit of black, but use a very, a very, very small amount of black. Um, but Payne's gray is, um, it's, it's just, a, it's one of these unique colors that you just can't really mix. Uh, there are a number of colors in the pure line that um, just because of the pigment itself, you can't really mix other colors to get to that kind of pure color. But you can always, there's always a workaround to just about every uh, paint color. And tonight, uh, plenty of things that we can use instead of that. So if you needed to, you could use black or if you wanted to black plus just a tiny bit of Prussian blue or some ink spot or something like that. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. No problem. All right. So we're going to start painting our uh, canvas and we are going to, let me just pull this down here and watch this. We're going to do a close up. Yep. That's perfect. Okay. They love to see that view. So I will ask you to do that while, okay. and if you don't remember while you're painting. Okay. That's fine. Um, but I want you to see that our sky is not uh, a very bright blue color. It is more um, purpley gray. So that's what we're going to aim for. And we're going to get there in kind of a roundabout way, but it's pretty easy to do. So you will notice that I am not putting my brush into water. Um, when I need to put my brush into water, I will make a big announcement that you, you can put your um, brush in water. Otherwise, stay out of the water. All right, so I'm just going to pick up uh, some titanium white on my brush, and I want you to pay attention to how I hold my paintbrush. So I put the handle of the paintbrush right where my pinky joins my palm. So that's where the end of the handle goes, and then you just grasp your brush and you are ready to paint. Do not hold your brush like a pencil. That's going to make your painting very, very tight and uh, not what we want tonight. We want a loose a painterly style. So the um, where your pinky meets your palm and grip the brush and then we're ready to paint. All right, somebody's asking about the red color on my palette. That yep. is pure orange. And this I'm using a one inch flat brush. You always want to use the largest brush that you can possibly feel comfortable with. And so on this little canvas, a one inch brush is going to work just fine. So I'm starting in the middle of my canvas and I'm applying the titanium white in about a two inch wide band all the way across the canvas. And I'm putting plenty of paint on so that I'm not having to struggle to cover my canvas with the paint. It's not a thick application, but there's enough paint on there that it covers very easily. And then I'm just going to carry some of that color up to the top of the canvas, a little closer to one side than the other. And then the same thing at the bottom, just kind of carry a little bit of that color down and I'm not picking up any more paint. So it's a little less paint down here at the bottom. So go ahead and do that. I'll give you just a minute to uh, put that on there. I'm not sure. Um, no, it just looks white. <laughs> okay, I was hoping that we could see some shiny and dull, but it's not working. You'll, you'll see it'll all be, it'll all make sense in just a minute. So about a two inch or two and a half inch wide swath across the middle and then carry some up here and then just kind of clean your brush off down here at the bottom. Easy peasy for starting out. And BJ Kemp, we are using Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Paints oh. this evening. I'm glad you can see those comments. You can see them faster than I can. Okay, well, it just I just happened to glance yeah, and saw awesome. the question yep. right there. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, I, I have to keep watching the clock because my minutes sometimes turn into like 10 seconds. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you, give you a, a full minute to, uh, to put that on there. But I, I want to remind you all, everybody who's painting along, you can stop painting when you have finished the step I'm teaching. Let that sink in a minute. And then I'll continue on to say that just because there's extra time doesn't mean you need to keep painting. You stop when you're finished. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pick up a very, very small amount of pure orange, and I'm going to mix that in with some 
titanium white, and I'm making kind of a, a pale orangey color. And I'm going to apply that over here on the left side of my canvas, just in a random patch. Can you see that? Let me move that up. Okay, so you can see the little random patch of pale orange there. It kind of looks pink and that's okay. And then I'm going to wipe my brush on my paper towel. And then I'm going to pick up some white and a very small amount of ultramarine blue and mix that on my brush. And I'm going to brush that at the top of my canvas in the open areas. So still holding my brush the same way at the back of the handle and I'm just brushing that on. So now I've got three patches of color and some white. So right now it looks a little, um, it looks a little babyish, a uh, little pastel there. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of Payne's Gray on my brush. And you remember I had the white and blue on the brush. So now I'm just adding a little Payne's Gray to it. Still a light color, but I'm going to brush some of this on and that's just going to darken the top of my sky a little bit. So go ahead and do that. I'll give you a moment to do that and I'll repeat the steps for you. We started with our brush that had titanium white in it. We picked up some pure orange and made a light pale orange color and applied that to our canvas. Then wiped the brush, picked up titanium white and ultramarine blue, brushed mix that together and applied some blue at the top of our canvas. Then added a little bit of Payne's gray to that and added that on top of the blue at the top of the canvas. So that's what I have on my canvas right now. Let me see if I can remember to bring mm -hmm. that up for a close up view. Yep, that's good. Okay, so Perfect. I haven't really done, any, I haven't done any blending or anything and that's where we are. So I'll let everybody have a moment to catch up and then we'll be moving on in just a minute. And this is, uh, this is a fun little project. And once you've done it all the way through once, uh, you'll be able to do it a second time much, much faster because you'll understand exactly how the steps go. And you could paint this on greeting cards uh, for the upcoming holidays. Um, if you have um, some old vintage books laying around, this would look really nice painted on the cover of a small book. Or um, if you go in the, uh, fine art section at Michael's and look at the sketchbooks. Mm -hmm. They probably have some smaller pocket size sketchbooks there and you could paint this on the cover of one of those and give that to someone uh, for them to do their journaling in. So That's lots of idea. uses for this. It's a versatile little design and it doesn't, um, it's, uh, it, it's something that everybody can relate to. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to wipe my brush on my paper towel and notice how I do that. I fold my brush over the bristles, I mean my blue shop towel, I fold that over the bristles of the brush, pinch and pull the brush through. So that grooms the brush back to a nice flat uh, chisel edge and then we're going to start blending. So I'm just going to blend using a light kind of crisscross motion and the paint should stay wet for you, give you plenty of time to blend with this and we just wanna to move to soften the edges of our colors. Don't get rid of all of the color that you have on your canvas. We're just softening it up. And if you see some brush marks, that's perfectly fine. You want people to know that this is hand painted. All right, so that's, we're all done with the blending of that. So the blending took, I don't know, 30 seconds, but it's nicely blended. I don't have any harsh edges of color and I've got a nice pink glow and I've got some nice uh, gray tones in the sky. So I'll give you a minute to do that. So far, I mean, we're not doing any, none of these techniques that I'm gonna teach you tonight are difficult at all. Um, I make it a point uh, when I'm teaching people how to paint that no matter how complex the painting is, we always do it in little tiny bite-sized chunks so that you can tackle each little step 
uh, with success. And when you put them all together, you end up with a painting that you should be proud of. All right, so do we have any questions uh, right now, Kira? Um, somebody asked uh, if you applied the gray yet and you have added the gray. Yes, I did add the gray and then I blended the um, pale orange, the light blue and the darker blue all together. So we're about ready to move on to the next step, which is I'm going to pick up some more titanium white on my brush and some ultramarine blue, which is the same blue we started with earlier this evening. And I'm just gonna brush that on here at the bottom of the canvas. And then people are asking where they can watch this after. So I am posting, it's on Michael's community classroom page, just where you went and signed up for this class. They have a great library of this class and all their other past classes that you can go ahead and watch um, on demand when you have time. Perfect, thank you. And let's see, um, did the pale orange cover the white in the middle? Part of the white, it did not completely cover the white. Okay. Right. So did I've added this lighter. Did you put water on the brush when you use the gray? No, 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 no. I've not put my <laughs> brush in water at all. I said I would make a big announcement when I put my brush in water. All right, okay. so I've added this light blue on and I've just softened it. So it merged a little bit with the um, pale orange and then with the white that was on the canvas. And now I'm just going to pick up a little uh, Payne's Gray, darken this color. Oh, hi Paula Kansavage, I see you there. And you're right, I rarely use water. Water does a number of things that I don't want to have happen. I don't want to thin my paint. I don't want to make it more transparent and I don't want it to take longer for it to dry. So no water in your brush. All right, so I'm just gonna dab some of this darker gray color on basically in the two corners and then just kind of pat and soften that color on. All right, so that is my blue and I've darkened it. So now you can see basically we have a, a nice warm glow in the center of our canvas. We've got some white areas and then we've got some uh, dark areas kind of in the corners. So overall, it is a very soft uh, blue gray background with a little orange glow in it. So that's what we're looking for right now. So I'll give you a minute to catch up with me and then we're going to dry our canvas. Now we should have some very soft winter music playing. I know. Well, we just went from uh, Halloween pumpkins to uh, to Christmas. Yes. Um, winter. I, I, <laughs> it's it's a little too early to break out the Johnny Mathis Christmas album. <laughs> yeah, it but, got so cold here. I know. I mean, but growing up, that was the official start of the Christmas season at our house. Uh, as soon as you heard Johnny Mathis and Sleigh Ride, you knew Christmas was on full tilt. Okay, so I've given you a chance to get your background all uh, blended. Uh, Donna's asking if it can be done on heavy paper as well. Yes, you can. Oh, AJ, sorry that you had snow. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn my heat gun on. It's not terribly loud, but it will get hot and I'm going to dry my whole canvas. I will say before you dry yours, make sure that you are happy with your background. It should be softly blended, but you should be aware of all of the colors you put on there. Andy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, what kind of paper would you recommend for a card? Would you just buy like a, a pre-made card like in the scrapbook department or is there a special paper and you would fold your own? Um, well, 
now that you've given me options, um, the, first <laughs> thing, the, the first thing I would do would be to look in the scrapbooking section and see uh, what the thickest cardstock they have is. Uh, if they don't have anything that seems sturdy or substantial, here's, here's what Andy would actually do. I would buy uh, a pad of very heavy watercolor paper, okay. something probably 400 pounds three or 400 pound paper. And I would probably put down a ruler and tear my watercolor paper uh, so that it has the nice little deckled edge on it. I would do my painting on that and then uh, adhere it to a greeting card. So you get a little dimension and a little bit better um, uh, paper to work on. That's great. All right, so here we go. So now I've done my scrapbooking talk because <laughs> everybody loves scrapbooking with Andy. All right, so I'm putting out a little bit of fresh white on my palette because I used up most of what I had there. And I am picking up everyone's favorite painting instrument, the painting knife. Now, some of you are really in love with a painting knife and some of you uh, think it's the worst thing that's ever been forced on you. I will tell you that if you are trying to do paintings and you are using a plastic palette knife, you will have so much more trouble than if you are using a really flexible uh, metal blade palette knife. Um, so invest in a really good, very, very bendy um, metal palette knife. You will thank me a thousand times over uh, when you go to use it. All right, so here's how we load the palette knife. Everybody has been taught different ways to load a paintbrush, but not necessarily how we load a palette knife. So I'm going to pick up a little roll of paint on the palette knife. And you can see that the paint does not go all the way to the tip and it doesn't come all the way to the base. It's just on the back of the palette knife. There is no paint on the other side, okay? Just one side of the palette knife, not to the tip and not all the way back. Okay, I hope I can't see anybody's reaction. so. If you understand what I'm saying, give Kira a thumbs up so that she knows you understand. Are we seeing thumbs ups? Yeah, I'm more watching you than everybody, but yes, I got thumbs up. Okay. Oh, lots of thumbs. Cool. Yeah, hi guys. Okay. <laughs> I haven't been looking right. at everybody. I've been watching you. Okay, well, it's, uh, okay. Somebody wants me to repeat this. All right, I picked up a little bit of white paint on my palette knife and I, don't go all the way to the tip and not all the way to the back. And there's no paint on the other side of my palette knife. Very neat with what I do when I load my palette knife. You can't just scoop up paint willy nilly and hope that you're going to get some good results. All right, so I'm going to apply the paint to the canvas in a fluffy cloud-like pattern. And then I'm going to smoosh it around to make it more pleasing. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put the paint down and kind of smush it on there. And you see not much happened. Let me show you what's there. That's kind of what I got there. I'm not freaking out because I know I'm not done. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna take the palette knife and I'm just gonna kind of smear that around a little bit. All right, so that's what I've got now. I've softened it out so it looks a little bit better. And I'm gonna pick up another small little roll of paint. Again, not to the tip, not to the back, and only on one side of my uh, palette knife. And I'm gonna put that on there, and then I'm just gonna smush it around, laying my palette knife very, very flat to the surface, okay? Um, I'm trying to see if I can show you at a different angle. My palette knife is down like that on my canvas. I'm not at an angle trying to scrape the paint off. I'm laying it down very, very flat. And you can see that I've got these nice, soft little cloud effects. If your sky doesn't have any darkness on it, your clouds will not show up. You have to have some, some dark gray in your sky to make your clouds show up. So again, a little bit of paint, not to the tip, not to the back. And then we're just kind of fluffing that on and I can smoosh it around a little bit. So, I mean, I'm not sure why people don't like the palette knife other than they think they're supposed to lay something on and have it 
be absolutely perfect from the first moment it touches the canvas. And that's more than likely never going to happen. All right, so there are my clouds. I'm perfectly happy with those clouds. There, it shows up more in person than it does. Oh wait, there we go. Look at that now that I've figured out how to show it to you. You can see that there's quite a bit on there, but they're uh, nicely softened out. Uh, they don't look like I've glued cotton balls on there. So nice, soft clouds. So I'm gonna give you, I don't know, two minutes to do that. So go ahead and paint your clouds onto your dry sky. And if you have questions, type them in the chat and either I'll answer them or um, Kira will relay them to me. This is one of those things that I think people put so much pressure on themselves. Can I do it again? I don't have um, another sky painted that I can do it on. Um, I can tell you what I did again. Excuse me. Um, I picked up, the most important thing is loading your palette knife with a smaller amount of paint and not getting it all the way to the tip and not getting all the way uh, to the back. Uh, your paint is drying fast, that's fine. My, my whole sky is completely dry. And then I just traveled on the white on there and it looks like it's much more textured than it is, but there is some texture to it and that's perfectly fine. I probably, uh, worry less about um, how things look than you all do. Um, and that just, that comes with uh, painting and practicing. Uh, so you'll pick up a little paint on your palette knife and then you're going to put it down on the canvas and then holding the palette knife uh, parallel to the surface, just kind of press and move the paint around because you don't have a lot on your palette knife. There's only so far that you can spread that paint out. All right, so giving you another minute to do the clouds. And I'm sorry, I was talking in robot voice there. Um, you're gonna have a, another minute to, um, to paint your clouds. And remember, you've got to have some dark behind them to make those uh, white clouds show up. So if your clouds are not showing up, don't fight it. Uh, just remember that when you paint this the next time, uh, here you can see that this, um, had quite a bit of dark behind the uh, clouds. And Donna is wondering if you can mix the pure pigment with regular acrylics. Yes, you can. All right, there we go. I'm trying to get this so you could see. There's plenty of dark color in the background of this. Um, so don't be afraid to have your sky be a little bit dark. It can be like a heavy snow clouds or heavy snow sky, uh, but then your clouds will show up on that. Okay, so while we are finishing up our clouds, I'm going to turn the heat gun on and I'm gonna dry my clouds so that my whole canvas is completely dry before we start the tree. Okay, I, I couldn't see that question, Kira. So um, someone said, um, can I mix pure pigment with regular acrylic medium body? Yes, you can. And then there was another question about how many paintings something. Yeah, oh geez. Okay, yep. so how many that? paintings this size can you get out of a paint set? And then I'll put the link um, to Michael so you guys can check out the price okay. and shipping. I would probably say that you could probably do, I don't know, 30 or 40. I mean, yeah, this you is don't not, need a lot. You use a tiny you know, bit. You see that I've used my white and I've used almost none of the other uh, paint, but I put, uh, I put more paint out so that it protects itself and stays wet on my palette. And I will tell you that the uh, folk art Pure Artist Pigments dry to a completely matte finish. So when they're dry, there is no shine to them at all. Okay, so I'm gonna put out another color on my palette. I'm going to put out some Viridian. And we are about to paint a tree. 
and I'm going to give you Andy's complete guide to how to paint a little evergreen tree. Everyone's excited for the tree. I know, and it's, it's, it's not difficult, but you have to do it the way Andy tells you to do it. Okay, so you have to make that agreement. All right, so I'm going to pick up some Payne's Gray and some Viridian, and I'm making a very dark green black color because we want our evergreen tree to be nice and healthy. Okay, so here's the hardest part is figuring out where the trunk of your evergreen tree needs to be. So I'm looking at my painting and my painting is about, uh, my evergreen's about two of my fat fingers up from the bottom of my canvas. And don't put this right in the center of the canvas. All right, so you could see I'm using a number 12 flat brush. All right, so you see that I put one, I just took the brush holding it up upright and I touched the brush to the surface and made a little mark like that. And to make the trunk of the tree, I'm going to make another mark on top of that one and another mark on top of that one and another mark and another mark and maybe another mark. So there what, I've made my tree trunk. What size brush are you using, Andy? This is the number 12 flat. So you could see I made my tree trunk just by touching the brush to the surface and putting one on top of the other. Uh, so this is a mixture of uh, Viridian and Payne's Gray. Okay, you all see how I made that tree trunk? I did not try to paint a line. Okay, let me show you again how I did this. I, let's see, I'm trying to see without, you could use any dark green color you have. All right, so setting the brush down, touching it, moving it up. I'm not making a very straight trunk, but that gives you an idea about how you create your tree trunk. All right, so we're only doing this one tree right now. So here is the hardest part of the entire painting. All right, so I've got my brush loaded up with Viridian and Payne's Gray. I have not put my brush in water at all tonight with anything. And I want you to watch very carefully. I'm using the corner of my brush and I'm touching that down and I'm just kind of dabbing to make a little bit of a triangle. Let's show you that up close. Okay, so I just dabbed with the corner of my brush to make a little triangle at the top of my tree. And that triangle um, is almost as wide as my paintbrush. So you can see that little mark I made right underneath that. That's the width of my number 12 flat brush. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at the tree trunk and I'm just going to dab and kind of go a little bit from side to side, dabbing a little bit wider each time I go out. You can see how I'm starting to develop a nice little evergreen tree. All right, so here are some Andy tips. Do not line these up like it's a German feather Christmas tree. You've got to have some branches that have a little bit bigger gap than others. Some of them will go up, others will kind of tip down a little bit, but this is just kind of zigzagging back and forth across the tree, making our little evergreen tree. Andy, will you hold it up again, please? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue doing this and then I'm gonna come back and correct anything that I think needs some adjustment. So you don't want to make a career out of painting this little tree. It should be pretty quick and easy to put this on there. Just keep picking up paint and we're just dabbing it on, making it a pleasant shape. And every time you do a little tree, it's going to be a little bit different. And some trees you're gonna like much more than others. Um, so I'm gonna come back up here. Let me show you what I've got there. 
Okay, so that's my tree right now. And I'm just gonna come back in a few places and kind of adjust um, the shape of the branches a little bit. So some of them, I'm just gonna dab on the corner and I might make them go up a little bit or I might carry something down just so that everything isn't lined up. And I want to make sure that as I come across the tree trunk that I've got a much more solid um, coverage of paint there. Really don't wanna see my tree trunk because I want it to look like my, um, my beautiful evergreen is nice and full. So I'm just messing around with my tree probably a little bit more than I should. I'm usually a big fan of put it on there and leave it alone. All right, so I think this tree is good for now. All right, so that's what my tree looks like. See, it's dark across the trunk and then the uh, branches are not equally spaced out on either side. Let's look at the other one. We haven't put our light green on there yet, uh, which we're about to do, but I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to paint your tree. So paint your tree up to this point. So just give you a little time to do that. And every time you paint these trees, uh, it's gonna be just a little bit different and that's perfectly fine. That's, you want them to be a little bit different. And it will, you will be able to, after you've done this once, um, I would imagine if you're sitting by yourself without anybody bothering you, like a teacher telling you what to do, um, you will be able to probably paint this whole scene in about a half an hour. So you could churn out a great number of these things. Um, you could also paint them on, um, if you bought some really, really heavy watercolor paper, you could uh, paint them on the watercolor paper, punch a hole and tie a little ribbon in it and make yourself some Christmas tree ornaments um, with your uh, little uh, evergreen scene. So lots of different things you could do with this uh, simple little design. looking at some of these comments and the people painting on the little wood cookies or, uh, you know, there's just yeah. no, no end of the cute things you could do with this uh, little painting. I love the idea of the cards and the journals. There's so many pretty journals. Yes, and um, there are, there are all different kinds. You can find um, really nice um, uh, cork back uh, journals or uh, some that are almost like leather or suede. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking on. would be pretty. Yeah, and you can paint directly on them. Um, there's, there's no harm in, in, in going ahead and doing that. And if your journal is a little bit larger, uh, what I will caution you about, and I, people don't often take this kind of thing into consideration, this painting was designed to be a four by six painting. If you try to do it a lot bigger than this, it's not gonna be as attractive because part of the charm of this is that it is small. Um, you know, if you tried to paint this on an eight by 10, it's going to be, um, you're just gonna lose a little bit of its charm. So keep it small, keep it diminutive, and you'll be much happier with it. Okay, time to move on. So we have our dark green part of our evergreen tree. And then I'm adding to my palette some medium yellow and some yellow light. You could use either or, or both of them. But what we're about to do now is we're going to take our brush that had the uh, dark green mixture in it and we're just going to lighten that up and we're going to make a brighter, lighter green color. So I'm just brush mixing in some yellow. I am gonna wipe some of this excess paint off of my brush that gets some of that dark color out of my brush so that when I add the light color, it lightens it up a little faster. So that's just a little trick. And no, I did not clean it in water. And no, I don't want to put it in water. I want this to be just dry paint uh, that I'm picking up. So it's the same consistency that it comes out of the bottle. 
All right, so here we go. We've got a light green color and we're going to start at the top of our tree and I'm just gonna dab some on with the corner of my brush and then turn my brush to the flat side and I'm just kind of dabbing some of this brighter, lighter green on. I'm not covering up everything that went on beforehand. So there you can see where I've dabbed this lighter green on and that just quickly creates the highlights on the evergreen tree. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Do not cover your entire tree with the light green. And I kept most of mine kind of from the center over to the right hand side. And let me hold that up so you can see it again. Doing the quick zoom there for everyone. It's a very simple way to paint. It's a number 12 flat brush. It's uh, a very uh, easy way to paint a nice little evergreen tree. Okay, so while you all are finishing painting your tree, I'm going to dry my tree with the heat gun. That was again, a number 12 flat brush. Okay, so I dried this with the heat gun and um, you need to let your canvas kind of cool off because you don't want to paint on a hot canvas. That'll make your paint seize up. But for everyone who's been waiting, this is the magic special announcement. I am actually going to dip my brush, my number 12 flat brush in water, rinse it out. And I'll give you just a minute to catch up and then we'll move on to our next step while my canvas cools off and you all finish up with your uh, highlights on your tree. So if everybody's kind of up to this point, let's give a thumbs up and let Kira have a chance to tell me if people are thumbs upping. Mm, there's a couple, yeah. Okay, yep. I, I, they're, I know they're, they're finishing up right now and that's perfectly fine. Yep. <laughs> okay, I, I want everybody to be moving along, but I don't want you to feel like you're being rushed too much. You should feel a little bit of um, pressure, but not too much. <laughs> a little pressure is a good thing. I don't, I don't want anyone to feel completely um, overwhelmed because that's never, never good. Okay, I am going to uh, begin to do my next tree. And this is um, a, a kind of an old timey trick. Um, I've painted an opaque object in my foreground, and then I'm going to take my brush that I've added some water to, so you can see there's a little puddle of water here, and I'm going to take some Viridian and some Payne's Gray on my brush, and I'm just making a really, really transparent uh, dark green color. All right, so by transparent, I mean I can see through this color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the left of my tree and I'm going to paint another tree trunk in. And this tree is not going to be as tall. All right, so there's my tree trunk. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing, but with transparent paint. I'm going to start by dabbing on the corner of my brush to make myself a little triangle at the top. And then once my triangle is the width of my brush, I'm just going to dab on my little fir tree. And I did that super fast. And I know you all are thinking you can't do it that fast. You can do it pretty quick. And that, that one's much better than the first one I did because I'm revved up now, ready to paint. All right, so I'm gonna give you a moment to do that. 
because you already understand the technique and you've already painted one tree, so this is easier to do. And you can let this paint come over the top of your other tree. It's not gonna hurt anything if paint comes on top of the other tree because it's transparent, you can see through it. All right, so this is Viridian and Payne's Gray picked up together on the brush and thinned out with water until it's transparent. So green and gray and water. Yes, Viridian, Payne's Gray and water. And so what I've done is I've made a little transparent tree. So looking at the other painting, you can see that there's nothing much to that little tree in the background. It's just a transparent wash of color in the shape of a little evergreen tree. This makes the tree look like it's behind the other tree. All right, now I'm going to pick up a little bit more color on my brush, still thinning it down. This time I have a little bit more paint than I did the first time. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to dab some of this color on, mainly across the trunk of my tree, just kind of darkening up the center of my tree because there is more branches that come across the trunk than there are at the outside edge. So you could see there where I've added some of that darker color down the center of the little tree in the back. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Nothing hard there. Uh, you, like I said, you've already painted one tree. Now you've got a second tree going on and it's pretty easy. Once you have done one of these paintings, Here's, let you get a look at this one. The little tree in the background. Uh, yes, it does look like watercolor. It's a very, very simple little transparent wash of color on there. We're not working too hard, trying to paint too much detail on it. Just a very simple little transparent tree. We just added a little extra dark in the center of the tree to give it a little bit more definition. Okay, so we're ready to move on to our next step. All right, so I had my, I just rinsed out my brush a little bit and I'm basically have a little bit of that green color that was still in there and I've added some more Payne's Gray to it. So it's now um, kind of the color of an antique bottle, but it's very transparent. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to, I'm holding the brush again with the, with the handle where my pinky joins my palm, and I'm just going to scuff or skim or skip a little bit of color underneath the uh, trees. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back to my big flat brush, which I've not cleaned out or rinsed in water. And I'm just going to pat and kind of soften that color out a little bit. So basically what I did was I made a dark smudge underneath my trees. Can you repeat that again? I certainly can. Thanks. I took my, the color that was on my brush and added a little bit more Payne's Gray to it and thinned it out with water. I added, uh, just kind of scrubbed that on underneath the trees and then took my big flat brush with the, had the white paint on it and just kind of scrubbed back and forth across that a little bit and just kind of made a little dark area underneath my trees. It doesn't look like much right now, but that's okay. We're gonna put some stuff on top of it and it will look much different and much better in just a minute. So I'll let you catch up with me and get that done. And while you're doing that, I'm going to dry this. doesn't take much. Um, what did you use to attach the uh, board to the cardboard, Andy? You just use double-sided tape? Use, I, just, I didn't even use fancy double-sided tape. I just used some scotch tape and made some loops and then put about four loops on the back of it just to hold it there. So this, and, is, this, is, only, this is only put on there so that it's easier to paint. Yep. Yeah, no, it's a great idea. Um, somebody, well, there's a couple people, just this is a first time maybe using Pure. 
Um, so uh -huh. I said to reach out on the Let's Paint Facebook group if they yes. have some maybe some more questions and you could you know chat back and forth with them or they can get some Absolutely. more information um so i yeah i don't want people to get frustrated because it is a really beautiful paint it is just truly different than our regular typical folk yeah. art acrylic paint that we use on paint night so um absolutely but, go to the yeah. let's paint yeah, with plaid but, facebook group and reach out to andy and um he will totally give you some tips and walk you through some things I will. The, the biggest difference that most people notice about the paint is it is so thick. And most people aren't used to having a paint that is this thick right out of the bottle, but you can do so many different effects having a paint that is this thick. Uh, and there are just things you can't do um, with regular um, acrylic paint that you can do with this. All right, so we're dry and I'm ready to go on and show you how we're going to create the snow drifts underneath our um, uh, evergreen trees. All right, so once again, I'm going and I'm picking up some titanium white on my palette knife, not going all the way to the tip, not going all the way to the back of my palette knife, a small roll and no paint on the other side of my palette knife, okay? And so then here, I'm going to do this a little bit more carefully because I don't want to completely cover up my um, evergreen trees. But I am going to start and just kind of push this on and then kind of smear it around, pick up another roll of paint, put it on, and then smush it into place. And you can see how easily I am just picking up a little extra paint and smearing it where I need it to be. And I am covering up a lot of that dark area underneath the tree, but I'm going to leave some and I'll show you just where all of this goes. So let me bring this up, but you could see how I've left some of that uh, dark space. It's so funny when the questions pop up, it covers up my painting and I feel like I need to move it. All right, but you could see the darkness that's still underneath there, but I've got some nice uh, little uh, paint speckles up here at the top of my snow drift. I love that. So I'll show it to you on here. So you could see that, um, there we go. So you could see how the paint is kind of traveled on and you can see the darkness underneath it. Got to have that dark to make the lights show up. So here you could see uh, the texture of the paint and the darkness underneath and the light showing on top. So pretty simple snow there. And now I'm going to teach you how to spatter uh, using a toothbrush because there's more to spattering than meets the eye. All right, so here we go. If I spatter with white paint on here, you're not gonna see much show up um, because there's, the background is very light and there's white. The only place that the white's gonna show up is on top of our trees. So keep that in mind, I'm gonna dip my toothbrush in water, and I'm going to pick up some white paint, and I'm going to thin it down on my palette. Here are where the Andy tips start coming in. The thinner the paint, the bigger the spatters. The drier the paint, the finer the spatters. But you need to check to see what's going to happen. So I've got some color here on my palette, and I want to put the bristles toward the area I'm going to spatter, and I'm gonna pull my finger across the bristles toward me. And I'm looking here on my palette and I've got a lot of really super fine specks. So I'm gonna add some more water to my little puddle of paint here, because I don't want them super, super fine, but I'm always gonna test every time. There we go, now I've got some nice size spatters there. So blotting the excess water off of my finger, I'm going to now come onto my canvas and just spatter a little bit on my trees because that's where this is going to show up. Andy, what else could they use other than a toothbrush? Um, I don't, I don't know of anything that is going to be as good as a toothbrush. All right, Here, fair I, enough. I, no, no, no. I, let me explain. <laughs> I have been, I've been teaching painting since I was fourteen, so about, we'll just say more than thirty years. And I have never come across anything that spatters better than a toothbrush. 
All right, so there you could see the little spatters on my tree, and that's the only place they're showing up there, but we've got a whole side that we need to put some snow on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this same little puddle of paint and I'm going to add a very small amount of Payne's Gray to it. So I've made a little bit of gray snow here. And I'm going to test that on my palette, see what spatters I get. That looks good. And so now I'm just going to add some of these blue gray spatters here and there on the canvas. They're a little fine, so I'm going to add a little bit more water to this, maybe need a little bit more paint too. But nothing is, nothing's going to give you the control that uh, a toothbrush does. There have been special uh, tools, some of them look like bottle brushes that have a little handle that spins around on them, and that's great if you want to spatter everything in the free world. But um, with a toothbrush, you can really control exactly uh, where your spatters go, how large they are, and it, you are in control, which is what you want to be when you are adding stuff to your paintings. So not just, don't be random with this. All right, so you could see up in the sky, you see those little specks of dark there. You can see some down here at the bottom too. Just want to add a few little speckles of the gray snow on yours. Let's bring this painting up here. And I think you could see over here on this side, there's some nice uh, gray snow spatters that show up. Every time you spatter, it's going to be a little different. Um, here's some nice gray spatters that show up there. There's some more up here at the top. Um, it's a subtle thing. You don't want to overdo this and make it look like some horrendous blizzard. It's a gentle snow. All right, so then I would take my heat gun and dry my painting. And then because it is um, very, very flat and matte in its sheen, I would recommend that you would spray on a high gloss varnish onto the painting and that will really liven up the colors and make your painting come to life. So I trimmed out the edge of my canvas using um, Folk Art Treasure Gold. And what I did was I loaded up my brush. Uh, I used probably a one inch brush loaded it really full of treasure gold, and then just kind of raked a little bit of the gold color on the edges, which gives me like a little bit of a um, kind of a beaten gold frame. Really pretty. Yeah, it's just, it's just a quick little trick that kind of adds a little bit of interest. And then of course, to paint the edges with um, the treasure gold and you get a really beautiful gold uh, edge on your painting. That gold looks this, beautiful. Yeah, it, there's nothing, nothing quite uh, beats the uh, treasure gold. And then this little painting done on a, a gallery wrap canvas, you can use it in your home. You could sit it on a table or tuck it in a bookshelf or anywhere you need to put a little bitty painting. And it's, uh, it's kind of an intimate painting because you have to get close to it to really appreciate it. So be sure to sign it. Uh, and then varnish it and you've got a great painting uh, for the holidays. And since we started here uh, early in November, you've got plenty of time to paint these um, all month long to give away through the whole holiday season. And uh, those of you who are already um, experiencing heavy snowfalls, my uh, sympathies go out to you. I think it looks beautiful and I'm so glad I am not dealing with it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks, Andy. Yes, thank, you. thank you all for joining me. It's been my pleasure to teach you this little winter landscape. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys, we'll be back next Monday. I think Jesse is back on Monday, and we have some really fun Mod Podge classes coming up, too, um, this week and next week with our, um, during the week, we're doing um, some just fun trend classes. So check those out. Sign up for them on michaels.com. Thank you, Michaels, of course. You guys yes. have a great rest of the week. Stay warm. Let me, let me say one, one other thing. Um, if you want to, um, to join the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, we'd love to have you there. And then uh, post your pictures uh, to the group and use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge with no apostrophe. Okay, that's all run together in your hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. Have a great rest of the Thanks, week. Everybody.
Bye. Bye.